Rebuilding a Tangy Model Steam Engine. This is part two. Dismantling the engine and looking at the valve mechanism. After I remove the soft solder with the blowtorch, the engine is still hot, so I'm just wire brushing some of the paint off it. I've never taken one of these engines apart before, so before rushing into it, I need to just look and see how it's all put together. The outer bearing pedestal is going to be the first part to be removed, starting by taking out the bolts one at a time. But I'm only removing the bolts, I'm not taking the pedestal out of the way, because before I do that, I need to slacken off the bolt holding the pulley and the bolt holding the flywheel to the crankshaft. So I'm going to start with the pulley, and thankfully none of these bolts are very tight, which is a good thing. That's the pulley bolt loosened, now it's time to loosen the bolt on the flywheel. You may notice that all of the engine around the bearings looks very oily. And that's because when I first got the engine from Simon at the steam workshop, it wasn't oiled at all. The first of the parts to remove is the pulley. It's tightening up slightly at the end of the crankshaft because the end of the crankshaft is rusty. But after the pulley's cleaned off the rust at the end of the crankshaft, as you can see here, the flywheel was very easy to remove. I'll turn the engine around so you can get a better view of it. I'm supporting the flywheel so that no strain at all is put on the bearing. And here's the interesting part. The eccentric sheave is actually part of the flywheel. I've seen this before when I rebuilt a very small Bassett Loke model. So I wondered if this tangy engine was made by Bassett Loke also. When I googled Bassett Loke tangy engine, lots of images of this type of engine popped up on the screen of the computer. I think this is a really good design. I wish more engines were made like this. Possibly it's more difficult to machine, I don't know, but having the sheave as part of the flywheel makes it really simple to adjust the valve gear. In fact, I made an episode of Model Steam Engines for Beginners using this image that you've just seen, and in this part 9 of Model Steam Engines for Beginners, I showed how to set the valve gear using this very simple method. On my YouTube channel, there's a playlist called Model Steam Engines for Beginners, and you'll find part 9 of the series in there, as well as another 11. And that's assuming that you're going to look in December 2018. Time now to remove all the bolts that hold the top casting to the main cast iron base casting. For the enthusiasts out there, this engine is actually a Bassett Loke engine. And to be exact, it's a Bassett Loke tangy engine. That explains why it's well made, but it doesn't explain why the pulley is all over the place. I don't know whether that's the original pulley or whether it's a replacement that someone's made. Either way, it's very wobbly and even the groove isn't right. Here's a cast iron base, sat all on its own on the bench. And this, unfortunately, is the tallow type oiler that's screwed into the top of the cylinder. One of the taps is missing off it. I haven't fully decided what to do with this. I think, though, I'm going to remove it altogether plug the hole and ream the cylinder. You can't really see the hole, the hole you're looking through is the one where the piston rod goes, but suffice to say the hole is too big and it's midway on the stroke of the piston. Another good fix would be to sleeve the cylinder. I've done that in the past and it's been successful. In this clip I'm removing, or I have removed, the crosshead guide oiler. I'm thinking that a small glass oiler would look quite good in this position. Glass oilers on the main bearings would also look pretty good too. I'll probably buy some from my friend Chris at 21st Century Steam. Now it's fun time. All the parts are going in a plastic, or should I say, polythene box. And I need to fit all of the parts together in this polythene tub, so that when I pour the cellulose thinners, or lacquer thinner, on top of all these parts, they're completely immersed in it. Here comes the solvent. What's going to happen? Overnight it will remove all of the paint, and the next morning when I come to look at it, hopefully, a quick brush with the toothbrush will take everything back to bare metal. I've been using quite a lot of this stuff recently for removing paint from the Hogwarts castle wheels. So for this job, I've had to open another can. That's enough, I think. Most of the parts are submerged perfectly, but I forgot about the flywheel. When I put the flywheel in the tub, it wasn't completely submerged. Because this stuff evaporates when it's open to the air, I don't want to find that it's below the level of the flywheel in the morning. 
So to be on the safe side, I'm adding a little bit more liquid. There's not much more I can do until tomorrow morning. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.